Hey there, my friends, what is happening, everybody? Vitae Dubin is here, founder of Bitcoin's Pulse Club, and welcome to another episode of Today in Crypto Show, where I'm discussing what the heck is going on right now in the crazy volatile crypto markets and how you can profit from it. And today, we're going to take a look at Bitcoin technical analysis and try to determine whether we are going in the next couple of months be bearish or bullish. I want to show you one particular Bitcoin indicator that just flashed bullish right now. The last time it happened was three years ago. And we have a lot of good news to discuss for Ethereum. If you're an Ethereum holder, we are going to have very soon London hard fork on August 3rd to 5th. We have another very awesome news for Ethereum. Uh, coming on, I want to discuss today. We'll talk about China crackdowns and where the mining is going and how the mining is re being reduced right now. And all the China crackdowns, we'll discuss all of that and some other positive crypto news. So let's get started right now. In the current market, we are seeing yet again redness. We are seeing Bitcoin is falling, Ethereum is falling. Binance Change, Cardano, pretty much the markets are in the red, except for few projects like Hedera Hashgraph, uh, the NEM project. So those are in the green, which is a good sign, Hedera, that is going strong. Even if the market is bearish at the moment, we are seeing another drop of 2.6% in the global market cap. Looking at Bitcoin, it does not look bullish at all. Uh, at the moment, uh, we are continuing with our downtrend ever since we broke right here on 8th of July on a four hourly chart. This uh, ascending triangle, uh, we have been coming back up, retested, almost retested it as a resistance, falling back down, have not created higher highs. We're continuing to create lower lows at the moment and the market is falling. It's very critical that we're going to hold this level of $30,000 as support. This is the last support for the bulls. If we're not going to hold this, then the next levels of $29,000 and even $24,000 are on the horizon. Uh, really, that we can fall that low. If this very critical level of $30,000 uh, is not going to hold you can see how many times we have tested it one two three four five six seven nine time right now we are testing this level very critical that we are going to hold if we will not uh, hold this level we'll add another six months to our bear market as plain as simple as that now looking at the five days the Gaussian channel it's like a quicksand we enter into the Gaussian channel right here in June and essentially we have been uh, falling right here and uh, just recently we closed this candle below this median line which is not a good sign at all uh, and we uh, in the history of uh, Bitcoin the last 10 years whenever we were falling into this Gaussian channel essentially we all the time we tested the bottom of the channel which is currently right now sitting at 26,000 dollars so uh yeah those levels those levels are possible be be ready be prepared for that uh, they may they might come <laughs> the twenty six thousand dollar bitcoin uh on the weekly time frame we are pro very prolonged for a prolonged time uh essentially here um yeah very bearish momentum is continuous <laughs> on a two day um, you might see this death cross happening also the two day time frame which is uh, going to be even more bearish if in fact it's going to happen here in the two days let's see uh, ethereum is being hit right now despite the positive news despite all the great that is happening with more bearishness today uh, we are falling yet again right now eighteen hundred and sixty dollars but looks like the momentum is about to shift to the positive very, very soon, yet again for Ethereum. Um, so when you have those dips, buy the dip, dollar cost average, buy the dip. If it falls even more, buy in some more, because this is where you're going to experience some pretty big gains um, in the spot market. And now look at this indicator. It's called the difficulty ribbon compression okay 
and this indicator right here um, let me scroll down and show you right right this point right this point is where it started to spike and uh, when we are spiking you can see in this in the entire history of Bitcoin when we started to spike 2013 you know there was a sign that a big move is coming also here 2015 we started to spike and then uh, there was a big big bull market ensuing right now we are spiking again on this indicator right now and this can be a, a, a good sign that we have a lot of the bullishness is coming to the market a bull market is coming in a big big way uh, based on this indicator you can see last time that it spiked like this here was 2019 we have seen a spike and the prices uh, went up here okay so we'll see we'll see about this right now where the market is still in very fearful 22 on the crypto fear and greed index yeah the market is very afraid um, in the last uh, the last time it was that afraid was in April 2020 right around the coronavirus when it started so we are in that era right now now looking at Ethereum, the London Mainnet announcement, just released an article, the Ethereum Foundation blog, officially on blog.ethereum.org. Uh, on July 15th, you can see, after a successful test and deployment, the London upgrade is now ready to be activated on the Ethereum Mainnet. It will go live on blog this, which is expected between August 3rd and 5th, okay? so. If you're not operator, you know what to do. If you're not node operator, essentially you don't need to do anything. It will be happening automatically. The following EAPs are included in the long upgrade. EAP 1559, that is restructuring the fee markets, how the fees are going to be paid, um, and essentially making it possible for Ethereum for the first time ever in its history to become a deflationary asset, which is amazing. The EAP 3198, the base fee operational code, which will have this base fee for Ethereum on the Ethereum blockchain setup. And then essentially uh, from there it's going to fluctuate up and down a little bit and from there and uh, it will be much more user friendly and with each of the transactions more and more Ethereum is going to be burnt which makes Ethereum a deflationary asset. So we have some more EIPs coming, including the difficulty bomb delay uh, that related to miners in December 1st, 2021, okay? So that's very cool. Uh, Ethereum now settled over two and a half trillion dollars in transactions in second quarter of 2021. And you can see that uh, according to Misari, Ethereum network on pace to settle $8 trillion in 2021 which is really amazing that includes all the stable coins as well uh, and their rate is growing usdc busd and DAI, right the biggest growing stable coins in the second quarter uh, which grew their market share okay according to the tether transparency report the total supply is currently at 62.4 billion dollars an increase of 197 percent since the beginning of the year and half of it on the ERC-20 and half of USDT on TRC-20. Um, yeah, so that's uh, very good news for Ethereum holders. Brazil gives the green light to Latin America's first Ethereum ETF, uh, which will allow more money to come through the stock exchange through this instrument called QETH11. The Ethereum ETF has been approved in Brazil. Amazing. <laughs> now, we are having the ECB, European Central Bank, announcing officially its first steps to digital euro. Yes, digital euro is coming. We've been telling you about it for so long now. They've been preparing now. The official, it's official. They are going to create a digital euro. They want to capitalize on the cryptocurrency. Uh, quoting, digital euro will be backed by a central bank. The ECB is keen to get a piece. They want to get a piece of the digital action to gird against cash euros becoming obsolete. Cash euros becoming obsolete.
it's official, they're saying it. <laughs> Should cryptocurrency get traction for real world spending, which they do. Uh, we can exclude it sometime in the future. These coins might gain popularity. And in that case, the risk is that possibility to use central bank money will be much lower. Cash euros are going away. Interesting, right? Now, looking at China crackdown on Bitcoin miners, you can see that ever since, you know, to, even 2020, beginning of 2021, you can see the hash power is going more down and down and up, down. China's electricity use for Bitcoin mining has fallen and continues to fall on its place coming under other countries. And this uh, crackdown, um, yeah, China's crypto industry cracked down. They have not only for mining, but also for trading, also from software, right? There is a, this uh, software company that uh, essentially the Chinese government did a crackdown on the Beijing Tongdao cultural development that has, you know, developed a software essentially facilitating cryptocurrency trading. So this is what they say. Do not participate in virtual currency trading activities. Do not blindly follow virtual currency related speculative behavior and be aware of damage to personal property and rights. Personal bank accounts should be cherished and not used for withdrawing or funding virtual currency accounts. Yeah, that's a serious, serious issue. Uh, and that's why right now all this Chinese hash power is coming to elsewhere to texas to um even to dubai yes uh bitcoin miners resume accumulating evidence shows that uh, essentially btc uh, the, the miners selling pressure has been greatly diminished and uh, right now right now we finally start to see more green in the bitcoin miner net position change after all this period of time uh, and uh, yeah yeah okay, that's a that's a good sign that's a good actually sign a good news bitcoin hash rate is recovering um the network is regenerating um yeah so this is a good sign the miners have stopped their selling and soon we're going to be back in the bull territory yeah crypto offers more freedom says the coinbase ceo um in a recent tweet responding to the co-creator of Dogecoin, essentially, uh, and he says that's why, you know, crypto provides people around the world the opportunities to invest whatever they want to invest in, whatever they want to be part of without being an accredited investor, right? And that's why Bitcoin has made so many people wealthy. Armstrong concluded that crypto creates wealth mobility and more equality of opportunities for everyone. Stressing that everyone can choose the system that works best for them. Crypto is not going to solve wealth inequality. It's not trying to create the same outcome for everyone with a mission to create an open financial system to the world. Okay. And to give you another piece of adoption of crypto, it is happening right now strip club in las vegas now accept bitcoin payments you can tip for their favorite uh dancers there and making it a flash using crypto so very very cool very positive uh to see that all right so uh yeah overall overall right now is uh pretty bearish we're still bearish uh on the bearish territory we do we'll need to climb above $34,000, make it as a support, and then ultimately break the $40,000 to get back from this bearish momentum that we have been feeling, having right now. We're still in a bearish momentum. is continuing despite all the positive and great news. So this is where the opportunity lies. I feel Ethereum is going to find its bottom very soon, and then we're going to start a pretty crazy massive re reverse. and. Uh, potentially cross uh, the previous all-time high at some point it will happen the four thousand two thousand uh, four thousand two hundred dollar limit it's going to uh, cross it yet again and create uh, more all-time all highs you can see on track with eight trillion dollars to settle this year and uh, become such a huge 
ecosystem for DeFi all sitting on Ethereum blockchain. It is amazing, uh, amazing to see. And this upcoming hard fork in next month that makes Ethereum a deflationary asset will definitely put it on tracks to breaking its previous all time high similar like bitcoin halving event that's what's happening <laughs> essentially in the theory right now with its fee structure so that's what i want to share with you in today's episode i hope you have a fantastic friday take advantage of opportunities in the crypto space and i'll see you in the next episode of today in crypto show